Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to talk about a very, very, very significant aspect of the existence of electrons in orbits around atoms. And again, we're going to simplify it by just looking at a one-dimensional box and then we're going to extend that to atoms. But it's the fact that, that electrons have to be in quantized energy states. They just can be all over the board. Well, all over the board, yeah. <laughs> they have to actually, they can only exist in very, uh, very specific energy states in energy state one, in energy state two, in energy state three, and nowhere in between. Because of that, we have to be able to identify what those quantum states are, and so what we're going to do here is try to figure out some basic principles here. Of course, if you look at the equation, the equation I have up here, right here, this is the kinetic energy of a particle. It's one half mv squared, so that's an equation that we're mostly familiar with. We have another equation that says the momentum is equal to mv, and a third equation says that the wavelength of a particle, and yes, particles have wavelengths if they're very, very small like electrons, which is equal to Planck's constant divided by mv, which of course is the momentum of that particle. h is Planck's constant. It is the, the number that we figured out that defines the quantum states that things have to be in, like small particles. And h, just to, for our benefit, is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, which defines the smallest quantum that anything can be, and it'll be typically a fraction of that quantum or an integer number of that quantum, and we'll see that in just a moment. So let's define the quantum states of an electron in a one-dimensional box. Again, one-dimensional box is a fictitious box. There's no such thing as a box only have one dimension, but just for the sake of argument here, so we're able to illustrate how an electron behaves, let's do this. So the next thing we're going to do now is try to somehow come up with the energy states of the various levels in a box like that. So what we're going to do is do a mathematical trick. We're going to rewrite the kinetic energy of a particle as equal to, we're going to call this m squared v squared divided by 2. Now notice I have a 2 in the denominator, I have a v squared, but I only have one m in the numerator. Since I put two m's there, I need an m in the denominator. Now we did that for a reason, because notice that the definition of momentum is mass times velocity, so this is basically momentum squared divided by twice the mass of the particle. So the energy of a particle is equal to the momentum squared divided by twice the mass. Now, now go to my second equation right here where I can see that h divided by the momentum is equal to the wavelength of the particle. So I can relate the momentum to the wavelength of a particle. And so the next thing I'm going to do is say, okay, let's take this equation and let's write this as p is equal to h divided by lambda. I simply put the p up there and put the lambda down here. Now if I square that, I get p squared is equal to h squared divided by lambda squared. And if I plug that in here, I get the energy of a particle is equal to, that becomes h squared divided by 2m times lambda squared. We're almost there. Next, I realized that since a particle behaves like a wave, and a particle is back and forth inside a one-dimensional box like this, it can only have certain types of wave patterns for it to exist. That's why electrons are, the energy level of electrons are quantized. They can only exist in certain wave patterns. So therefore, I realized that the wavelength in the case of the first energy state, this is the n equals 1 energy state, this is the n equals 2 energy state, the n equals 3 energy state, n just simply defines the different energy states, and as the number gets bigger, it's a higher and higher energy state. In the first energy state, the wavelength is twice the length of the box. Notice this is just a half wavelength, so the wavelength would be twice the length of the box. In the next stage, the wavelength is equal to the, the, wavelength is equal to the length of the box, so I take 2 L divided by 2, that becomes length, and so there you can see the wavelength is just equal to the length of the box. Over here, it's two-thirds the length of the box and so forth. Notice that the equation looks the same everywhere except for the denominator. It goes up one, two, three, just like the energy levels. So I can write a general equation for the wavelength as 2L divided by the energy level n. I want to go if over I here. I want to write lambda squared is equal to 2L over n quantity squared. So this becomes equal to h squared divided by 2m, and instead of lambda, I'm going to write 2l divided by n, and I have to square that. Now finally, if I simplify this equation, I can now say, and this of course would be the energy at whatever level I'm talking about, first level, second level, so, for, so forth, that's determined by this letter right there. Notice I have in the numerator, I'm going to get 
h squared, the n in the denominator, which is squared, will also move to the numerator right here, so that is n squared, divided by 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. I have the mass of the particle and l squared right there. And there I have now an equation that tells me that in a single one-dimensional box with a particle moving back and forth, like an electron, it can only have energy levels according to this equation. So this would be h squared n squared divided by 8 m l squared. Notice that h is Planck's constant right there. n is just the energy level, 1, 2, 3, 4, so forth. 8, just a constant. m is the mass of the particle, like the mass of the electron, and l is simply the length of the box. That means with a box of length l, an electron with mass of an electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 34 kilograms, can only exist in those particular energy states defined by the letter n, whatever energy state we're in. So if this is true for a one-dimensional box, this has to be true for orbits around a nuclei of an atom. So this is the way in which we're going to try to define how electrons exist in the nucleus of, uh, around the nucleus of atoms. So basically, how are electrons set up around the orbits that go around the, the uh, nuclei of atoms. And this is how we're going to define it. We're going to define it by the fact that they behave like waves. We're going to define it by the fact that they have probability density functions, meaning where they're most likely to be found by simply taking the wave function, defining the kind of the, the motion of the electron, so to speak. Uh, we square that, we get the, the density function, so we square that, it gives us probability of where to find it, and then we're going to be restricted by quantized energy levels. So electrons can only exist in certain levels due to the quantization of the energy that they can possess. And that's going to be the basis of defining how electron structures look like in atoms.